Hey guys, I'm Kieran McLean. Welcome back to my channel. My channel where we talk about kidney disease and try and raise more awareness for it by posting videos in hopes to make more people understand what us people of kidney patients go through. Now today's video is moving on following from the dialysis from last week. We're going to talk about the process and what it takes to go and prepare towards transplant and what's involved within that process. Now there's a lot of things that go on in the process towards the transplant and there's a couple of options which you can take depending on your own situation and what comes around at the right time. Now the initial planning towards transplant tends to start either when you begin your dialysis or when you hit the stage 5 of renal failure. Now stage 5 tends to be around a percentage of 15% or lower. The planning towards my transplant started pretty much right away after I had my uh, operation for dialysis. Now the first thing your doctors or consultants will do when you're starting your process towards transplant is usually begin tests on you to find out your, the certain things they'll need for, to find out matches, which is like whether your blood group, your tissue typing, and to make sure your heart and lungs are functioning properly in order for it to be a safe process to go towards transplant. After this, they'll put you on the transplant list with all your records. And the transplant list is somewhere where people that are in need of a organ for whatever transplant, whether it be kidney, lungs, liver, heart, etc. Uh, they are put on this list. So all the hospitals around the country have a log of everyone that needs a certain organ and their records to see whether they're compatible so that is when if what for whatever reason a hospital has a deceased person who is able to donate their organs if they are compatible with someone who's on the list they can call up the hospital they're at and have a plan put placed to bring that patient in and get ready for a transplant now in the past with the transplant list it's been a very pro um, a big problem it still is now but the fact that people had to opt in to be an organ donor uh, a lot of people weren't aware of that or weren't interested so there's only a very minute percentage of the population that were actual organ donors so the demand for people wanting an organ was so high that people had to wait months or even years before they got a call to say that there's an organ for them. Luckily, since the 20th of May last year, in 2020, that scheme has changed to an opt-out system. So that means people have to opt out if they don't want to be an organ donor. So now anyone above the age of 18 and doesn't have any immediate medical co uh, conditions affecting particular organs are put on the organ donor list. So hopefully with this new system, there's going to be more potential organs out there for people in need of them and the waiting times on transplant lists should be decreased massively. Now after you are put on the transplant list the next step tends to be to begin testing on immediate family members and friends whether that be parents, siblings, spouses, close friends or even um, kids, your sons or daughters, if they're above the age of 18. The reason it has to be the above the age of 18 is so that that person can give their own consent to going through with surgery for a donation, as it isn't something that's that straightforward. And consent is a very important thing, particularly for this. The first test is usually a blood test. This is to find out the blood group of the person, see whether it's a match with the recipient or the patient. Uh, it's also to find out the tissue typing of the person and to see whether there's any risk or knowledge of infection within the person. Now, if I'm being completely honest, I don't really know the ins and outs or the details about this. So I'll leave some links below in the description if you guys want to do your own research about it. Now, if you are ever in this situation, it is massively, massively important for you to have a conversation with your family about it, as organ donation isn't a very straightforward thing. 
and it is definitely something you should only do if you are 100% sure it's what you want to do. And I'm sure the person you'd be donating to does not want you to feel pressured into it. As I know myself, I would have never wanted to put any of my family members under the pressure that they felt like they had to donate to me. Now, once the blood results come back and they are all a match with the do uh, the recipient, the donor, the next so, um, line of testing tends to be a ECG, which is an echocardiogram, and a chest X-ray. This is to keep an eye on the donor's heart and lungs to make sure they are very healthy if they are to go through with surgery, as having healthy heart and lungs particularly will make the recovery process after giving a kidney easier and more straightforward for your body to recover from. Then doctors will go through the donor's family medical records to make sure there are no past hereditary issues with regarding the donor and to make sure there's no hidden illness within the donor to make sure everything is confirmed to be okay and safe for them to proceed. Now just as a make sure at the end, doctors will tend to ask the donor to give a 24 hour urine check to make sure there's no UTIs like urinary tract infections or protein leakage within the kidneys and to make sure they are completely healthy to be passed on to a recipient. Now after all these tests, if everything comes back and appears to be compatible with a recipient, then a live donation transplant will take place in the next following months, usually planned at a time where several doctors and surgeons can be available and to make sure that it all goes smoothly. However, if you don't have an exact match, but you have someone who has got a healthy kidney, there is an alternative option, which is called a living donor pool exchange program. Now, this is where a recipient and a donor will go through surgery at a similar time, along with other recipients and donors in the same situation as you across the country, in where the donor's kidney will be taken and like transported across the country to a different recipient who may have a match for that kidney. So this could work within like a group of three, four, five, etc., all across the country where a kidney is passed on to a different recipient across the country until every recipient ends up with a kidney that is matching for them. Now the thing about this is it takes much longer to plan ahead of this as they need a group of people where the recipient can all find a matching kidney for them. Now I know some of you might be thinking, but don't you have to be related to someone to be able to donate to them? And the answer to that is no. You don't have to be related to someone to be a match for them. However, it is usually more likely for someone you're related to to be a better match than someone who isn't related to you. Now there'll be some people out there who will not be able to find someone who can donate to them as they may not have any close family members or friends that are a match for them. And that's when we go back to the transplant list and people then have to wait for a deceased donor transplant. Now, whether a deceased donor transplant, it's nowhere, it, how, it is planned, obviously, as you need to make sure you have a kidney that matter, suits your body to be able to function and work properly. But there's no really time scale involved as pretty much you'll get a call from your hospital to say that they've found a matching kidney for you and within the next one well the next 24 hours usually you'll be having your transplant from that call now to find a match this way it's usually unfortunately it would usually be from someone who's passed away and they are willing to donate their organs to someone who is in need of them however something that's quite interesting that a lot of you might not know for a deceased donor to be able to donate their organs, they have to die in a controlled environment. Now, dying in a controlled environment is usually within a hospital where, as someone's passing away, they have doctors and nurses around them to control their death. So they can monitor any damage to the organs or minimise any damage to the organs and know exactly how long they've got to transplant these organs before they become unusable. And that's why to this day there's still long lists on transplant lists 
as people who offer to donate, there's still only a small fraction of those people who are actually eligible to donate their organs, as a lot of people die in ways which it isn't safe to use their organs after they've passed. Now, the different organs in the body have different lifespans before they're deemed unusable after passing away. Now, for kidneys, this tends to be the range about 24 to 36 hours before you are unable to use them. So from that point of the person passing away, that kidney needs to be taken and transported and transplanted into a recipient within that time frame before it becomes too long for it to recover from it. Now, live donor transplants tend to have about a 95% chance of working for at least five years minimum, whereas a deceased donor, it's 90% for, to work at least for five years. However, in most situations and scenarios, a deceased donor is usually favoured, as this means having a donor go through surgery and risking complications with them isn't needed. Now, I personally got a deceased donor kidney, although I was due a potential live donor from my mum in the next few months after I had my transplant. But yeah, that's this week's video about transplantation and the process towards transplant. Now, I'm going to leave some links below for you guys to read more into being an organ donor and what it means. As being an organ donor can be one of the most, the biggest important things you can do in your life. As you can give someone a second chance at life. Being an organ donor for someone who is in need of an organ is the best thing you could do for someone in your life. I know every day of my life I wake up and think about the family who were kind enough to donate a kidney to me. So please, if you do have some time, have a quick read and think about it as it could be a chance in your life where it might be one of the best decisions you've made in your life. But yeah, thank you everyone for watching. Take care and I'll see you in next week's video. Goodbye.